yourself in the mirror. And a lot of people look at themselves in the mirror and they're not happy where they are at that point in their life. They're not making as much money as they like to be making. They don't have, uh, you know, any significant amount of wealth accumulated. Maybe they're in a bad relationship. Uh, maybe they're not being a good parent or a good father or a good husband. And the biggest thing that I've heard that really has kind of changed my life was the toughest sale that you will ever make is selling yourself. Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage, and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode, another life-changing episode of the Gentleman's SHF Talk with Alex Ramirez. Success, happiness, and fulfillment talk with Alex Ramirez. And um, today I have a very special guest. And I always say this, but it's because it's always true. I'm very excited to talk to him and get to uh, learn, learn from him and, 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 you know, get a little bit of his wisdom. Before I introduce him to you, though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been leaving reviews, comments, likes on all the major, major podcasting platforms, Google, Apple, Spotify, and to you who have been watching on YouTube as well. Thank you very much. And I want to ask you for a favor. I want to ask you that if you get some value out of this interview, if you if there's if you get something right, some feeling, some value, some piece of wisdom, I want to ask you to share with one friend since this is how we grow. This is how we share our message. This is how we motivate, inspire and bless other people to change their lives. And um, and, you know, and when, while you're doing that, subscribe, leave us a like, leave us a comment, leave us a review. And I know that most of you won't do that. Actually, 95 percent of people actually never take, take the time to leave a review, like, comment. But the 5% of you who do are the ones who make all the difference. So to you, I say thank you. And today I have Brad Lazar. And uh, he's an author. He's a speaker. He's a coach. Um, and uh, he's founder of Capital School. Capital, uh, right, and he's about to, right now, he's, uh, he's throwing an event in the next couple of months called Capital Con. He's going to have amazing speakers. Um, and uh, I'm excited to talk to you, man. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your time. And welcome. Great. It's great to be here with you, Alex. I'm excited to be a part of your show. Awesome. So, Brad, the first thing that I do with my guests, man, is um, I tell them to introduce, well, not, not introduce themselves, but walk us through their entrepreneurial journey, mm. 75 seconds or less. <laughs> 75 seconds or less. Um, you know, I grew up like a lot of people in what I would call a upper middle class family. Um, my mom was a stay at home mom. Uh, taking care of me and my siblings. My dad was a uh, executive. He worked in the real estate industry. And um, I always kind of tell people that there was a third person in my life, much like, you know, Robert Kiyosaki writes about in the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that was my very wealthy, rich uncle, my uncle Henry. And um, I remember him telling me one day that if you can find out in life, like what your primary skill is, what you do really, really well, better than anybody else, and package that up and create content around it and then share it with the rest of the world where it helps transform the lives of other people. It'll help make other people very successful, but in the process, it'll make you hugely successful as well. And so that moment in my life when he shared that with me is what I call a revelation. A revelation is a point in your life, kind of like a major aha moment where it's almost like an epiphany, an awakening. And that basically allowed me to be highly convicted in what I do, where today I get on stages all over the world. I appear on podcasts. Of course, we run Capital School, which is probably the world's largest coaching and mentoring program, really just teaching people how to attract, how to raise, and how to close money from high net worth individuals. Uh, you know, over the course of my career through my efforts and the efforts of teams I've led, I've raised over $2 billion in investor capital. And I realize it's one of the biggest struggles and one of the biggest problems that business owners and entrepreneurs have, because I believe everybody in life has what I call a dream, Alex. 
it's kind of that desire to do more. Mm -hmm. But when I boil it down with people and I say, like, how long have you had this dream or have you had this desire? In many cases, it's years. It's like, well, I've been thinking about starting a business and I've had that dream for five years. What's the one thing holding you back from getting started? And it always comes down to money. I just don't have the money. And what people don't realize is money's not the problem. You see, because all the money you need exists in the world. It's just that it's in the pockets or the bank's accounts of other people. And so if I can teach others how to attract the attention of a potential investor, how to work with that person so that they open up their checkbooks, what I'm able to do now is make other people's dreams, other people's desires become a reality. And so I've been real blessed and real humbled on this journey of doing what we do. But, uh, you know, in a nutshell, that's a little bit about my journey as an entrepreneur that takes me kind of from where I was as a very young man all the way through to where we are today. That's amazing, man. Um, and it's an amazing insight, right? It, it, it based, and definitely a revelation for a lot of people that all the money that you could ever need, that you could ever want, that you, that, that, you know, that you want, that you need, it's already there. But it's yeah. just another people's pockets. And you got to find a way to get them to give it to you right and one of those ways is to like find your find what you call your primary skill mm -hmm. right so so like what, what was your primary skill how, how did you find it because look man selfishly like i want to i want to know because um you know like with, with with school like my daughter like what she's she's three years old right now and uh, one of the things that i'm thinking about doing is not sending her to school right to like learn all of this bs of i don't know everything that we learn in school right and instead Uh, focus on like getting her to like taste and getting her to like explore her curiosity and taste a, a bunch of things uh, to see what she's good at to see what she's attracted to and then just exploit that and 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 invest a lot of resources into her so that she can become world class at that one thing that she is good at so that by the time she's 15 she's like you know like world class at that sure. so that's what I want to do so I'm really interested in finding out like what's your so what did you find was your primary skill man how did you find it and um yeah You know, it's a great question. Um, you know, my story largely is I went to school just like most people because my parents expected me to. I was kind of living a life for other people. You know, my parents, as we were growing up, always told me and my siblings, you know, hey, you're going to go to school. You're going to get a good job. You're going to enter the workforce. And so as I was brought up, it was kind of ingrained to me that that was the expectation. And really, It wasn't just my parents, that's kind of the expectation of society as a whole. You know, our school system is broken. Our school system doesn't teach people how to create and how to accumulate wealth. Um, it really is designed to push you into the workforce so that you can get a job. But when I was in school studying architecture because I wanted to become an architect, I went to work for a very small oil company. And what this oil company essentially hired me to do was to get on the phone and reach out to people that were on a list and build trust, establish a relationship and get these people that were ultimately investors to a point where they were opening up their checkbook and writing a check or wiring uh, funds into a bank account that was set up uh, in the oil company for them to invest in. And I got really, really, really great at this. I mean, I was working probably 12 to 15 hours a week, you know, between class after school. But just working 12 to 15 hours a week, I was making close to $100,000. And this was, you know, back in the mid, late 1980s. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money, especially for a college kid. Like, what am I doing in school trying to graduate with a diploma that's going to allow me to go out in the workforce, make 60, 80,000 when I'm making 100 and I'm only doing 12 to 15 hours a week? Like, what could I earn if I was working full time? And so unbeknownst to my parents, I didn't tell them. I just kind of turned my back to my education, walked away from school and started working in the oil business. And one thing led to another. I eventually at the age of 23 launched an oil company. And here's the funny thing. I always tell people I had never drilled an oil well. I knew nothing at all about running a company. Number three, I was scared as hell. But I said to myself, you know, I'm young. I can always bounce back. And so I just bet and went all in. I printed up some business cards and some letterhead, got on the phone, started calling investors, and I started hiring and teaching other people how to do that as well. And over the course of about 10 years, we built a pretty nice size oil company with 35 employees. And fast forward many years later, 
I was watching TV and on TV was Steve Harvey. And he was on stage in front of his huge audience and he was basically telling that audience, I believe everyone here in this audience today has what I call your something special. It's like your primary hard skill. It's what you do better than anybody else you know. And it didn't really hit me then, but it was about a week later. I was actually in my backyard on my patio, uh, enjoying a cigar, drinking a scotch, just kind of watching the wildlife. And it like hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, wow, like my hard skill, the one thing I know how to do better than anybody I've really met was raise money. Like I've raised literally hundreds of millions of dollars over my career. I bet I could teach other people how to do that too. And so that was kind of the launching pad that basically accelerated the growth for what today is Capital School. It was just recognizing that for me, that was like the one thing I'd been doing for roughly 35 years. And what we call that is a demonstrated capacity, meaning I have demonstrated capacity over an extended long period of time where I've done something, I've perfected it, I've mastered it. And what that does is that gives you conviction because now I'm able to get up on stage or I'm able to talk to people and articulate what I do because I'm so confident in my abilities due to that long period of time of essentially doing something over and over and over where, you know, for me, it's easy. I realize for other people that are just getting started, there is a learning curve, but at the end of the day, anybody can go out and raise capital. I mean, I've got students, one of my students, Nicholas in Las Vegas, I was with him just a few weeks ago, the guy's only been in the program a couple months. He's raised $6 million. I've got another guy in San Diego that just sent me an email through people he knows. He's raised about $2.4 million. And what we're talking about here is life-changing money. You know, when yeah. you put your hands on a million dollars, that's life-changing money. You're now changing not only your life, but you're changing the life of your family and you're creating a legacy where it's going to affect your children, your children's children. Because if you can create a way to leave that money in place, it's going to change the lives of people below you for multiple generations. And for me, that's really what moves the needle. That's what gets me excited. It's seeing the testimonials. It's talking to my students. It's seeing the things that they're doing through my efforts and the impact I have on all of these people around the world. That was amazing, man. So, man, so what, how old were you when you found your like skill, your skill, your like number one skill that you think that you're good at your superpower? So I was doing it all along and, you know, I've been raising money for mm, yeah. 35 years, but really when it hit me, when I kind of had that huge revelation after seeing, uh, you know, Steve Harvey on TV um, and it really was like, wow, that that's my skill. Like that's what I'm able to do better than anybody else. And of course I can do a lot of other things, but I said, if I can package that up and create content around it and write books and deliver it via podcast. And when I speak on stages, you know, that's really where it's going to become transformative. And really, that was just about probably two and a half, maybe three years ago. So, you know, Capital School has not been around for, you know, years and years and years. It's a relatively new concept and a relatively new program. But today, it's just blossomed. And I think we're probably the largest and fastest growing community of people doing this because I've got students now all around the world. I mean, I wake up every day. I've got students in Australia, New Zealand, here, of course, in the United States, uh, Canada, England, Dubai. I was talking to people yesterday over in Germany. And so what I explain to people is in each country, the regulations as it relates to what you can do and can't do are going to be very different, obviously. But the ability to attract somebody else's attention, knowing what to say to that person to pique their interest, then having the material in place, your pitch deck and your, the other things you need to very eloquently explain to them what it is you're doing, that's something that's universal almost anywhere in the world. You see, it doesn't matter whether you're in England or whether you're in Australia or whether you're over in Dubai, it's the ability to communicate. It's the ability to basically explain to somebody, hey, I've got this great investment idea. Here's what I'm doing. We can make a lot of money working together. Let me explain to you what that looks like. And then just basically asking, is this potentially something that you would have an interest in? And if they're qualified and if they have the money, you then slowly move them forward in the process where ultimately you just ask them, you know, how much of this would you like to invest in? And hopefully they open up their pocketbook. They say, I don't know, you know, put me down for 50,000 or 
put me down for $100,000. And then you just rinse and repeat that cycle, doing it over and over again with new people. And that's how you can go from raising 50,000 to a couple hundred thousand to ultimately a million dollars. And that's what allowed me to, you know, grow an oil company and raise literally tens of millions of dollars. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Like having right now a million dollars in my pocket just to like invest in business and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all the resources that I wouldn't, that I would, that I would never, that I would ever need to scale higher by, by systems, invest in marketing. It would be life changing. Like, like you said, mm -hmm. so you know, let, let, let's say that I'm, you know, an entrepreneur listening to this and I think that, oh, like, like, yeah, raising a million dollars would be amazing. But like, I'm like, no, that, 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 that wouldn't work for me. Right? Like, what would you say to them? <laughs> the first thing I would say is, why do you say that? Like, why do you say that wouldn't work for you? Uh, you know, maybe you're scared. Maybe there's a limiting belief. Maybe there's hesitation. Let's face it. Fear is one of the biggest things that holds people back ultimately from success. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the fear. It's really fear of what other people think. Um, that's really what I've learned over many years of talking to some very, very high powered thinkers, the biggest fear most people have. It's not that you're scared necessarily of starting the business or doing something bigger with your life. You're really scared about what other people will think of you if you're unsuccessful. And that's really, I think, the biggest stumbling block we all have. It's like, well, what do my family say about me? Or what do my close friends say about me if I'm not successful? And what you have to realize is the most sexual people out there, the people that you know have made a lot of money or that run very successful businesses, they've learned to block out the noise. And mm. that's a very, very important concept. You have to be so focused on what you want in life that you have to basically block out the noise. You have to understand that your mind is going to play games on you. These limiting beliefs are going to rise in your subconscious mind and they're going to hold you back saying, well, don't do that. You know, at the end of the day, you can do anything you set your mind to and you have to convince yourself of that. But once you start moving forward and once you start creating that forward motion and that momentum, you just keep showing up every day. You just keep doing the same things every day because small incremental efforts have a compounding effect and they compound to huge transformations over time. You know, it's kind of like losing weight. Everybody wants six pack abs, but very few people are willing to put in the work to get them. And that's why most people don't have a six pack. So I really admire people that do because I know that it takes time and I know that it takes dedication and effort. The same thing applies to building a multi-million dollar business. You're not just gonna wake up tomorrow and have a multi-million dollar business. But if you start doing the things every day and start creating that momentum and start hiring a team around you, eventually you'll continue to grow until you wake up one day and you realize, wow, I've got a business here. I've got employees and my dreams are starting to come true. That's how you go about doing these things to bring about that monumental change in your life. A hundred percent, man. That was very valuable, like consistency and focus, Wh whatever you set your mind to, you can achieve. And I've, uh, I've experienced that. It's, it's, it's almost crazy. Like when you commit and when you're like, this is what it wants and this is what it wants and you focus on it. And like, you basically, you like, uh, to a certain degree, wash your own brain on like just wanting that one thing. All of a sudden there's opportunities coming all over the place for you to actually get to that one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like the universe conspires in your favor for, for you to get to that one thing. You start meeting people, you start getting in the right circumstances, in the right places, in the right yep. opportunities to move forward. And I've experienced that and, and, and it's definitely valuable. But fear, man, fear is like the number one thing that keeps people from taking that one step. And mm -hmm. like you said, it's not the fear of doing the thing or failing at the thing. It's the fear of, of being judged when you do fail at the thing, right? Being judged, right. being criticized, uh, not like being being seen, not being accepted, not losing people's validation, losing people's approval. And like, that's the one thing that holds everyone back. And actually, you want to know what was the one thing that uh, was keeping me from starting my podcast? Like I wanted to start my podcast from like a year and a half ago, uh, interviewing what I call modern gentlemen, but yeah. I didn't until six months ago. And you want to know what was keeping me, what was holding me back? What? just myself, my mind, you know, like, like not feeling good enough, right. My, what people might, might think, uh, fear of being judged, right. Like I, I feared reaching out to like people like you running million dollar companies or, you know, anyone, any other men out there because I didn't feel good enough. Right. I, I like there was, when I was starting, when I was first starting, I would reach out to this very successful, highly successful man. And 
I would, you know, like uh, ask them to come on my podcast to like impact people. And they would say yes. And I was like, holy shit. And man, I, I almost got the urge to like cancel the, the, the podcast because of my own insecurities and mindset, which was crazy. So like myself, that was the only thing holding me back. Mm -hmm. So man, um, like fear, like fear on like, you know, losing validation, losing approval, mm -hmm. what other people might think, being judged. That is the, I think like one of the major things that holds people back. So how can, like, how, what do you say to someone to help them get rid of that, to help them get out of that matrix? I think the biggest thing, you know, you have to do is you have to really look at yourself in the mirror. And a lot of people look at themselves in the mirror and they're not happy where they are at that point in their life. They're not making as much money as they'd like to be making. They don't have, uh, you know, any significant amount of wealth accumulated. Maybe they're in a bad relationship. Uh, maybe they're not being a good parent or a good father or a good husband. And the biggest thing that I've heard that really has kind of changed my life was the toughest sale that you will ever make is selling yourself. And that's a really, really important concept. You know, we're all in sales in some form or capacity. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you're a salesperson selling cars or whether you're, you know, selling uh, service, service-related business, even, you know, doctors, CPAs have to sell their services ultimately to clients that hire them. But really the toughest sale you ever have to make is selling yourself that you deserve more in life. And you have to understand that you can't change the past. The past is already behind you. So let's not worry about changing the past. What you can change is everything from this day forward. And I was at an event last year and that, that event was Tim Grover. Tim Grover, for those people that listen to your podcast and your show uh, that don't know who Tim is, he was and still is today to some credit, the coach that coaches the ultra elite in major sports. He's worked with people like Michael Jordan. He's worked with people like Kobe Bryant, like Tiger Woods, like Alex Rodriguez. And when asked, like, what separates all of these superhuman athletes from pretty much everybody else that plays in the game, he said it just comes down to one thing. And that one thing is the mental decision that they have made to go pro in everything they do. It's like you decide that you're going to put your amateurish ways behind you and you mature and you wake up and you say, from this day forward, I'm going pro. I'm going to show up every day. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to exert more energy. I'm going to pursue my goals, my dreams and desires. And I'm not going to listen to my subconscious mind and buy into the limiting beliefs and the fear. I know I can do this. And you just start doing it. You see, the life we lead, which is our, quote, reality, is largely defined by our belief system. And a couple of years ago, I actually trademarked something. It's called the Art of Beliefology. The Art of Beliefology is this philosophy that if you understand the concept that by changing your habits, your daily habits, basically you're going to reinforce a belief system. And then that belief system defines ultimately your reality that is ultimately the life that you live and lead. Well, by changing your habits on a daily basis through repetition, what that will ultimately do is it will start to create a new belief system for you. And then that belief system will eventually transform into a reality. You'll become the person that that belief system identifies with. And so let me give you an example of how this works. I was coaching a student uh, up in Massachusetts by the name of Jason. And one of Jason's major problems is he was extremely obese and very overweight. He weighed about 480 pounds, which is just uh, enormous. And not only was it something that was affecting his confidence, it was also, of course, largely affecting his health. Um, and so I said, Jason, you know, this is a wake up call. I need you tomorrow to literally wake up an hour early and go for a three mile run. And there was like a huge pause, like, what? <laughs> and I was like, I just wanted to make sure you were listening. I don't necessarily need you to do that, but you do need to wake up tomorrow an hour early. And I just want you to walk for 30 minutes briskly. You need to do this. Like, can you walk 
for 30 minutes every day for a week, briskly and just swing your arms. He said, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a try. So he did that for literally a week. He woke up 30 minutes and went for a walk briskly. And I said, okay, the second week, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look for the telephone poles or for the light poles in your neighborhood. And what you're going to do is you're going to walk from one to the next, and then you're going to alternate. You're going to lightly jog, and then you're going to walk, and then you're going to lightly jog. So you're going to walk, lightly jog, walk, lightly jog. Do that for a week. And every week, Jason, all I want you to do is I just want you to double the distance. So the week after that, you're going to walk two telephone poles, and then you're going to run two, and then you're going to alternate, and you're just going to keep increasing the distance. Well, fast forward now, it's probably been about nine months. Jason's lost over 220 pounds. He's now down to about 240, which, you know, is not ideal, but literally getting rid of like 240 pounds of weight, that is a major accomplishment. And what was really amazing as we were going on this journey, one of the calls we had is he said, Brad, you know, remember a couple months ago, you were telling me about the importance of these things called affirmations. I said, yeah, that's like, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and making positive affirmations to create the identity. He said, man, I was really struggling with that. Like every time I looked in the mirror, I just saw something that I didn't like. I really despised myself for allowing myself to get to this point in my life. But he said, today, I was actually able to, to say something. And I was like, man, here it comes. This is going to be really good. And I just sat there and I said, what was it? He said, when I looked in the mirror today, I said, I am an athlete. And I was like, bingo. He said, that's exactly what I was hoping was going to come out of your mouth because see what we've done. We've changed your habits because now you're running every day. You've been able to build up your endurance where, you know, you've been doubling the distance. You know, now you're telling me you're running three miles, you're running five miles on your daily runs. And so that is transformed into a new belief, which is you're an athlete. And so that's now going to define for you a new reality. I have no doubt you'll drop another 50, 60 pounds and get down to an ideal weight because now your belief system and the reality that we've created through a change in habits, you now identify with yourself as an athlete. Same thing applies to a businessman. Same thing applies to accumulating and getting wealth. It's basically just changing your daily habits so that over a period of time for you, it creates a new identity and you start seeing yourself in a different frame of mind in a different light. And that's really where transformation takes place. Man, I, I, I love the art of uh, belief, belief theology. I'm actually really passionate about that. So um, when I was, when, well, to like fulfill, the vehicle that I found to fulfill my purpose of helping men become modern gentlemen is actually, was actually high performance mindset coaching, right? Like that was yep. the, the, the vehicle. And one of the reasons why I was doing high performance mindset coaching is because I believe that there's three things that entrepreneurs need to level up. Belief, um, belief, character, and skills, right? Belief yeah. is like your mindset, right? Your beliefs. And then your character is like uh, your your performance, right? Um, yeah. Like how, how focused you are, how consistent, how disciplined you are. And then your skills, right? You need skills. Um, most people, like skills are, are easy. Like you can go on YouTube, search how to like run a Facebook ad and you'll learn. You'll learn in 20, min 20 minutes. But the, the, the difference between someone who actually takes that information and goes and do, does something is their belief and their character. And like sure. that comes to like mindset and performance. And like, I'm really passionate about that. And um, I, there's, there's this quote that I really love, which is um, your net worth is the direct reflection of your self-worth. In mm -hmm. order to increase your self-worth, you must be willing to do the self-work, yep. which is your mindset and your habits. And what, what was this, uh, this guy's name? The, the, who uh, lost his, all name was, uh, his name was Jason. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jason, 480 pounds, right? Yeah. He had this belief of I'm a fat person, right? I'm a, I'm obese, right? Like that's how, how he identified himself. And like that belief led to his identity of being a fat person, which led to him having all those bad negative habits, which then gave them all those bad results, which then like fulfilled uh, yeah. his own prophecies, right? Of being fat. So by changing his habits, right? By like you helping him change his habits, he started to like uh, change his belief. So now he started to identify himself with that habit, right? He, he started to identify himself with being a runner, being someone who exercises and eventually being an athlete. That new belief led to him ident identifying himself as an athlete, which now what do athletes do? Well, they run every single morning, right? Because he runs every single morning. He's, he's lost hundreds of pounds 
And like now he's trapped in a positive feedback loop that it will take him to like like to a new to new levels of, of like success and happiness yeah. and fulfillment, right? And uh, I'm really passionate about that, man. Um, so that was that was that was major. And uh, I I I end my interviews with five questions, right? Asking by, by asking five questions. Before I do, I just want to go back to like um the. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to tell you that this podcast has completely changed my life in ways that you could never imagine, and I would like the same for you. Look, you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with, and the fastest way for you to level yourself up in every area of your life is for you to connect with people who are where you want to be, build relationships with them, and connect with them. The best way for you to do that right now in the digital age is for you to start your own podcast. And I just wanted to let you know that I have a free training that you can get free access to. It's called the 30-Day Net Worth Skyrocketing Three-Step Podcast Cloak Track Framework. And it's going to show you how you can start and automate everything in your podcast from finding your ideal guest, getting them on an interview with you, and creating an automated content machine in just 30 days. By executing on this free training, you're going to be able to connect with high-level people, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem, in just 30 days with less than one to two hours per week so that you can increase your net worth, your authority, your trust, your client acquisition ability, and your, your opportunity. So there's a special link for this free training in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye-bye. Raising money, uh, yeah. talk that, we were, that we we're having right now. And uh, so you earlier, you said that anybody can go out and raise capital. Right. So what do you mean with anybody? Like, what do, you, what do you have to have in order for you to be qualified to raise capital? Well, I think really, you know, raising money just comes down to a couple things. Um, number one, of course, confidence. You know, you need to be confident in yourself. You need to be confident in your ability to do whatever it is you say you're going to do with that money, whether it's invest in real estate, whether it's buy a business, whether it's, you know, do something else entirely different. Because at the end of the day, what I've learned by having conversations with some of the sharks that, you know, are on the hit TV show Shark Tank, like Kevin Harrington, as an example, he was uh, one of my speakers at my event last year. And he said, Brad, you know, if you watch our show, you have all these entrepreneurs that come on a Shark Tank. Some get funding some leave with the deal and others don't. But he said, it usually boils down to one thing. It's not that they're good or bad people. It's not that they have a good or bad idea. It's that when you're talking to a potential investor, you can have the greatest idea in the world, but if you're not able to convince that person that you can execute that idea, more than likely you're not gonna get the money that you're desiring. So what I've learned and what I teach other people to do is to communicate and articulate to a potential investor the ability to execute on whatever it is you're doing. And if you can't do it, that's fine. You don't have to do it. When I started my business, I had never drilled an oil well before. I had never built a multi-million dollar company. <laughs> so what I did is I went out and I hired an attorney. I hired a CPA. I found an experienced driller. I was able to build what I call a team of people around me. And then that way, when I was having conversations with investors, I was able to say, the person handling all of our legal is Gary DeShazo. The person that's going to send you your reports at the end of every quarter and at the end of the year is this person over here who's our CPA. And then over here, the guy that's going to be on the oil well that's drilling the well is Steve Martin. You know, And so by building this team, I was able basically to convince others to invest in me because they then saw that me and my team were capable of executing on that strategy. And so that's one of the very first things is you have to be confident. You have to also be able to explain that you can execute on whatever it is you're doing. For example, we have a lot of students that are in real estate. They're buying, rehabbing, and flipping houses, but they want to get into multifamily. They want to start doing bigger deals. And I explained to them the best way to do that is to partner with somebody that is already doing it now and work alongside that person so that they will coach you. They will mentor you until you get to a point of success where now you can start doing it yourself and start moving in that direction. And so really, I think for anybody that wants to do something bigger in life, the most important thing you have to have is the desire 
But then number two, it's you have to start creating that forward momentum. See, I have a belief that money follows motion. Money is attracted to people that become what I call a person of interest. Well, how do you become a person of interest? You do exactly what you're doing. You create a podcast. You post regularly to social media. You start speaking on stages. People start seeing you associating with all of these other big people. And they're like, wow, I need to start following this dude. He's a badass. He's like been on stage right next to Brad Lee, or he's spoken alongside people like Brandon Dawson or like Floyd Mayweather. And before you know it, that has a compounding effect on that journey. And you start seeing yourself as a much, much bigger person. You start realizing that you're capable of doing so much more in life. And so when you look at growing as a person, you have to understand that the majority of people, like 97% of our society, stay within their comfort zone. That's what we do every day. We wake up, we have our cup of coffee, we show up, we go through the motions, we live in that comfort zone. And unfortunately, that comfort zone has limited us to our place in life. It's what I call your cap. Okay, it's like you're bumping up against this cap every day because you're living within that comfort zone. So in order to stretch, you need to get outside of that comfort zone. And outside of that comfort zone is what I call that stretch zone. It's doing something that scares you. Yeah. You know you can do it, but it really scares you. And so I'll give you an example. I was going to an event last year to speak. And I told my wife, uh, I want to fly in a private jet. I'm not going to go on Southwest. I'm not going to go on United. Like, I'm going to fly private. She's like, okay, like, how much is that going to cost? I said, I don't know. Find out. So I called a couple of charter companies and I got quotes round trip from Houston to Miami, $25,000 to hire a private jet. And I told my wife, $25,000. And she looked at me like, are you crazy? Like, like, why in the world would you spend 25000 when you can go on United for three hundred? And I mm-hmm. said, because of the experience. I want to fly private. I want, you know, to experience what that's like so that I start thinking bigger. And so what I did is I figured out a way for me to sell the other seats on the jet to entrepreneurs and business owners that wanted to go to the same event, but also experience the same thing as well. And so I went to social media. Hey, I'm going to this great event. We're going to have VIP treatment. We're going to be right in the front row. And if you want to be on a private jet with me, another seven and eight figure entrepreneurs, it's going to cost you 5,000 bucks. And what I was able to do was fill up that plane. And make money. (laughs) With Yeah. yeah. And so essentially I flew for free, uh, but it also changed the lives of myself and other people because we now we're getting outside of our comfort zone doing something much bigger with our life. And then of course I did it again and again, but I got so much positive feedback from the other entrepreneurs that were on that jet with me. One of them, my friend Daniel in San Antonio makes the comment to this day that that experience changed him. He's like, dude, I realized that I had gotten too comfortable. We were making a good living and I had just kind of, you know, gotten to this point in life where I was coasting along but being on that jet with you and the other people that like me, and it woke me up and it re- made me realize that I was capable of doing so much more. So, you know, that's what I call kind of getting outside that comfort zone. For example, when I made the decision to do my event capital con, uh, you know, last year, that was a major like, holy crap, what am I doing? This event's going to cost me close to $100,000. But I did it you know, and, you know, hired people like Kevin Harrington to be a keynote, you know, that was almost 20 grand and he did it virtually. He didn't even show up. He did it virtually. So you start doing these things that scare you, but once you do them and you accomplish them, it's like your confidence level just explodes. And so I always explain to people, do two or three things a year that you're somewhat scared of, But once you accomplish them and you actually do them, you'll find out that's where the big growth and that's where the transformation comes. For example, you were scared initially to do this podcast, right? But how many guests have you had on it to date? And you now have no problem booking more experienced, bigger people because your confidence level has increased incrementally because now you've been doing it and you realize that you can start getting these big time thought leaders to your show. 
Man, that was incredibly valuable. And I just want to take a second to like uh, connect all the dots. And because, because like this right here, what you're saying, right? As, as simple as it is, is the key to like success and exponential growth, right? Like stretching well, yourself, uh, getting out of that comfort zone, because that's where out of that comfort zone, that's where you become a person of interest. So you by stretching yourself and, you know, taking the leap to um, rent that, that, that jet, right? That private, that private flight, uh, you like got out of your comfort zone, you were stretching yourself, but that made you become a person of interest, which other entrepreneurs were like interested in, in, in that. Right. And that's exactly why they, they, you know, they, they, they were able to like uh, jump on the plane with you. And, yep. and then I bet that in there, you were like the, the, the guy to look up to, right. Because like you were holding the event, like it was like an event that you were looking that you were holding and like people were looking up to you. Uh, I bet that you had business opportunities from that yep. and all because you stretch yourself. Right. An example for me, yeah. man, is that I thought so like I had a 10 year goal, a 10 year goal of speaking in front of hundreds of people, uh, thousands of people at an event. Actually, I have a vision board right here, like a, this thing that, that's printed. Yep. And one of the things that I see is like like an event. Right. And me speaking in front of, like in the middle. And I thought that I was going to do this in 10 years from now. But because I decided to stretch myself, speak to millionaires every single day, speak to high level people every single day, speak to people who are 10, 20, even 30 years ahead of me every single day. Yep. I'm going to do that this year. I got invited to speak at two events. Uh, one of the entrepreneurs is his name is Jefferson Rogers. He's like hanging out with Grant Cardone, hanging out with the real Bradley. Sure. He's throwing his own event, and I'm going to be speaking at his event, awesome. right? Like crazy. One yep. year from now, uh, this year actually. And then, as I was building this podcast, uh, you know, I got the idea, and um, you know, like I'm building the foundation this year to like throw my own event in 2023. So yep. the goal that I originally thought was going to take 10 years will happen. And, and then I set a goal for like next year, 2023, to like throw my own events. And I still don't know what's going to be called. Uh, but 2022, this year was supposed to be um, used to like build a foundation, right? Yep. So like building network of high level entrepreneurs who are willing to go speak at my events in 2023. But because I'm like growing my podcast so fast and I'm, and I'm building so many um, connections and, and, and relationships, and I'm getting so many entrepreneurs to say yes to go speak at my events. Instead of happening in 2023, it'll happen this year, in the third quarter of this year. Absolutely. So, you bet. And, and it's, man, it's absolutely fucking scary. But I'm going to do it because I, like, now I feel like I deserve it. And like the number one impact, the number one change that I've gotten from my podcast, from like surrounding myself with high-level people, being on Masterminds. Right now I have three diamond tickets for like the 10X conference. Mm -hmm. um, so I, like, I'm, like, that was a stretch for me. Um, but like I'm doing it. And like the number one impact for me has been, like you said, confidence, right? Yeah. Like a, a, a change in, in belief, a change in how I identify myself and how I see myself. Now I see myself as something bigger than I am. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, and like, now I feel like I can do more. I feel like I deserve more. I feel like I'm, I am more and, and I'm stretching myself and not all of that. I can already see and feel it's going to lead to some awesome stuff. Yep. So I love it, man. Thank you very much. Uh, so now, you know, we, we're about to like run out of time, but I have five questions. So the first one, man, is what, like, what advice would you give your 20 year old self if you could not change anything, not redo your life or anything like that? Just give yourself your 20 year old self some advice. What would that be? So the advice that I'd give myself as a much younger version, if I was in my twenties would be to surround myself with other great thought leaders to read books Learn from what I read, but most importantly, take action and put forth effort in the knowledge that I'm partaking in. The biggest problem people have is they go to events, they get in a room with great people like Grant Cardone, Brandon Dawson, they go to 10X, they get that shot of adrenaline or what I call motivation, and then they get home and they don't do anything with it. Well, yeah. what a shame. You've been around all these great people that can change your life, that just gave you a lot of knowledge. And then you do absolutely nothing with it. So the first thing I think for that answer would be to surround myself and get in proximity with great people, learn, but then put forth some effort and action so that I can actually start seeing some positive change. Amazing. Um, yeah. The second question, man, is around mindset. What is the one mindset shift that you've had that you can share that has allowed you to get to where you are right now in your life? Yeah, so the biggest thing really is you know, like I said earlier, it's um, understanding the art of beliefology and understanding that, you know, your mind has these limiting beliefs that largely are subconscious that are going to keep popping up throughout life that are going to hold you back. 
Um, and you just basically just need to block out the noise. Um, you need to basically just keep so focused on what you want and what you're trying to achieve that you just keep moving forward. Um, the other is a lesson that I learned from uh, Navy SEALs, and it's called the 40% rule. You know, I work out, I love to run, I love to cycle, and your body is capable of delivering much more than your mind. When your mind is fatigued and it says, man, I'm tired, like, you know, I've been out here running 10 miles, your body is only given 40% of what it's truly capable of delivering. And so the mind is now a tool. You now have to basically go through what we call the self-talk and basically have the body deliver the other 50 or 60% to get across the finish line. That's how people that are ultra marathoners go out and run 50 and 100 mile races. Most <laughs> people cannot even fathom running a 100 mile race, but people do it. And it's like, how in the world do you run 100 miles? It's because I've mastered my mind. My mind, you see, can basically tell my body to deliver what it's capable of delivering because you have to see it here to deliver it here. Your, your body will do whatever the mind tells it to. Cool. And a lot yeah. of times the, the mind says, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to go home and eat another hamburger. When in reality, if your understanding of that concept, you know, Jesse Itzler, who's married to Sarah Blakely, he's an ultra endurance runner and he's mastered his mind. He, he knows that the body will do whatever the mind tells it to. Yeah, that was an amazing insight, man. And um, going back to like the, the art of beliefology, yeah. it all like... Like the key is stretching yourself, right? Like and just deciding, choosing to starting doing different, which, yep. you know, is, is a habit, right? Yep. Um, cool. So, man, the third, the second, third question is map. So clarity. So like, do you have a strategy, tactic, tool? Like, what, what do you do to make sure that you're always, that you always have clarity in your life? Yeah. So, you know, I'm a big believer basically of planning in goals, um, if you don't have a roadmap and you don't know where you're going, you're just floating around like a cork in the ocean. And so you need to sit down and you need to have goals. Goals basically need to be, uh, you know, specific. They need to be measurable. They need to be something that you can take action on. They need to be somewhat realistic. And then, of course, they need to be time bound. We call that the SMART principle, S-M-A-R-T. But I have goals. And what I do is I look at the goals. And I revisit the goals on a monthly and on a quarterly basis to make sure that we're still on track. Sometimes you have to amend your goals and sometimes you have to bend them a little bit. But if you don't have goals that are kind of like that compass that are taking you where you ultimately want to be, you'll never get there. So that's kind of how to a degree I have clarity in what I want to do and what I want to accomplish. Nice. So like having this like end, end, end game, right? Like a, this goal that you have in mind, because that'll give you direction, you know, in the process, you can like bend and move and, and exactly. go sideways, whatever, but you ultimately know what you want, yep. right? And you know, your direction. Awesome. Uh, the fourth question is mindset map motion. Mm -hmm. So what is one habit that you have that you, that, that, that you think has allowed you, has allowed you to get to where you are right now in your life? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the big thing for me is really just a, a daily ritual. Um, you know, we all talk about kind of our rituals throughout the day, and, you know, I certainly have one as well. Um, and it's really starting my day with a run or with some type of a workout to just get my body moving. Uh, what that I find that that does for me is it kind of opens up my mind. It allows me to think about what I need to do that day or what I'm trying to accomplish that week, whether I'm on the treadmill, if I'm at a hotel or you know, whether I'm actually out running, if I'm here in our community. Uh, and then, of course, I combine that with, uh, you know, weights and other things. But it's, you know, starting your day off the right way. It, it sets you up for success for the rest of the day. And if you do that repetitively over time, what you find is, number one, you're going to be more healthy. But number two, you're able to focus on the things in life that are very important to you. Because we all hear the same thing. Oh, I don't have time to do that. That's not an excuse. You have all the time in the world. It's just that you don't want to make the time. Yeah. And so, you know, once you understand that to do certain things that are important to you, you have to make the time, then you can get a lot more stuff done. Well, if it means you wake up an hour early, you wake up an hour early. I mean, shit, I know people that wake up at four or five in the morning. Yeah. They do it every day. It's not like they do it once in a while. They do it every single day 
because the things that they're able to accomplish early in the morning set them up for success the rest of the day. And by the time, by the time 9, 9 a.m. Uh, comes, you know, yeah. when everybody's barely starting their day, they've already like made quantum leaps, right? And yeah. then you do that day by day by day, in a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, holy shit, right? Yep. So yeah, man. The, uh, and, and, then, and then instead of being a victim of time, you take responsibility and realize that no, like you can make time if that really is important for you. Exactly. Um, the last question is around measuring and tracking. So mm -hmm. any takes on that? Measuring and tracking on whether it's business or life? Yeah, you know, I basically love sports where you're competing with yourself. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I get team sports, football, basketball, but I love the sports where you're essentially competing with yourself. You know, for example, you know, running a marathon, each time you run one, you're trying to set a new record or, you know, triathlon. For me, I've done triathlons. You're trying to achieve a faster time. So that's kind of how I measure myself. It's really competing against myself, whether it's in, you know, sports or whether it's in business. Uh, you know, I've closed some big mega million dollar deals. Uh, you know, for me, the biggest deal I've ever closed was $11 million. And I'm sure at some point in time in the future, there'll be a bigger deal than that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I use as a measuring stick. It's, you know, the deals I've closed, um, how much I make. And then, of course, just for me, some of the things that I've done in sports where, you know, I'm always wanting more um you stretching. know we, yeah stretching we we obviously always get older but you know you're you're capable of doing so much more in life that you just need to keep stretching and just keep pushing yourself and just keep asking yourself like what's the next big thing like you know what more can i be doing that i'm not doing now and just keep reaching for that yeah man uh thank you very much i've gotten a lot of value from this man i've really I'm like, I start that. Like, this is like one of the best ways to start your day, right? Like talking to yeah. another high level entrepreneur full of wisdom. So, uh, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed this being with you here, having this, this conversation. So anyone listening to this go, uh, give Brad a follow and, um, you know, he has a lot of value. His content is great. His conference. Can you talk a little bit more about your conference, man, coming up? Yeah, so we do a big conference every year. Uh, it's called Capital Con. And, uh, you know, the whole intent of Capital Con is to bring people together so that you can network, you can get in the room with great thought leaders. Uh, last year's event was hugely successful. We had Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank and financial literacy expert Sharon Lecter, who, of course, co-wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, we had sports psychologist Dr. Kevin Elko, who has coached numerous uh, Pro Bowl and also college teams to the Super Bowls and NFL championships. The guy's just a rock star. Um, and so, you know, that's our annual event. You know, also, of course, um, we have our boot camps. We have our training. Uh, the best way to follow me is just on Instagram. It's you know, the little ampersand sign or whatever they call that. Uh, and then just Brad Blazar. It's my first and last name, B-R-A-D-B-L-A-Z-A-R. Um, there's some imposter accounts out there. Just be aware of those, but <laughs> you'll find me. You'll know who I am or just, you know, go to my website. And uh, at the website, you can see everything there is, the books, the coaching, the boot camps, the events, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, like I tell people, we're just here to add value to people's lives. I've written three great books. You can find them all on the Amazon. They're all great reads. But at the end of the day, it's largely what I said, you know, success leaves clues. It, re it really is that easy. Success leaves clues. You just have to find some successful people, start looking at what they're doing, and then just start replicating and emulating them. And by showing up every day and going through the motions, you'll start seeing that change. And the key is just don't ever give up. A hundred percent, man. Thank you very much. So yeah, go, uh, we're going to have all of those links. When is the conference? When is the conference happening? Uh, the conference has actually been moved. It was supposed to be in April, but we're actually looking at a new date. And the reason for that is there were some other very large, big events and people just wanted to come and they weren't able to be in two places at the same time. So we're actually looking right now for a new venue. As soon as we get that locked down, we're going to be announcing it, but it'll be sometime probably in the early fall. Cool. I'll keep yep. in touch with you because uh, I definitely want to go. I definitely want to meet you there. And uh, yeah, uh, expect me to expect me being there. And um Give Brad a follow. Also, while you're doing that, don't forget to subscribe, like, so that you won't miss another life-changing episode. And Brad, you know, surrounding yourself with people, 
like you said, success leaves to leaves clues surrounding yourself with other high level people looking for those clues is, you know, one of the, one of the most impactful things that you can do. And to help people do that, uh, for, just for this episode, for the Brad Blazar episode, I'm going to have a link down below um, that takes people to a free training, a free A to C training on how to start, grow, launch, monetize and oh. automate a multi-million dollar network building podcast uh, so that they can start like uh I don't know, you know, like interviewing people that they look up to, that they want to like start becoming like or learn from or look for those clues. And one of the one of the one of the um, ideas that I got, man, is I'll probably start another podcast since I'm really good at it and start interviewing possible um, investors to mm -hmm. raise capital. Love it. Love it. Right. Yeah. And start like building relationships with them. And that's because one of the first things that you, that you said is like, You, you know, when you were calling them, one of the first things that you needed to do is like just establish a relationship, build trust, right? And one of the ways you can do that is by being on a one hour podcast with them. Exactly. Absolutely. 100%. You know, the same thing applies to designing your own summit is, you know, a lot of people think, well, I, I want to get on a stage. Well, why not create your own stage? Why not create your own virtual event and do an entire day long event where you've got multiple speakers that you're interviewing back to back? You know, imagine what that looks like. Back in uh, 2019, when COVID first came out, that's exactly what I did. I created basically a huge virtual summit. We called it Conquer the Crisis. And we had literally about a thousand people that had registered for this event. The very first day when we were streaming live, we had on average between 700 to 800 people that were all in attendance. And over the course of about a month and a half, we did four of these. And I had people like Brad Lee and, you know, Coach Michael Burt and, Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, and uh, Les Brown's daughter, Serena Brown Travis, and Bobby Castro. I mean, all these big time celebrities. And that's largely what allowed me to make all of these great connections with all of these big people, right? It's inviting them to be a keynote speaker or a guest speaker on a huge virtual summit. The best part about it is there's very low cost involved in doing that. And it positions you front and center in the industry where now you're the host and organizer And you're building relationships with all of these great people that now get a chance to know you and understand who you are and what your mission is. And now you're not looking for a seat on the table. You yeah. built your own table. Table, exactly. Uh, you got awesome, it. man. It was, a, it was a pleasure talking to you, uh, Brad. I'll see you later, man. Bye-bye. Great, thanks. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment, and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment, but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez 1020 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 